legendary punk band DOA have a brand new studio album out now. We come in peace. There's also a brand new live album by DOA. Welcome to Chinatown DOA Live. Get them at SuddenDeath.com. Crown Produce secures produce locally and from around the world for Canadian retailers. Crown Produce is also proud to secure sponsorship of University Football on Shaw. Crown Produce, supporting Canadian retailers and Canadian amateur football. Calgary, Laval, Vanier Cup. Crown Countdown News starts counting down now. Hey everybody, welcome to the 2013 final edition of Crown Countdown U. I'm Ryan Sullivan, and as always, that's Andrew Wadden. Ryan, 49th edition of the Vanier Cup went down over the weekend in Laval, featuring the Laval Rouge et Or against the unbeaten Canada West champion Calgary Dinos. Take us there. Oh, I'll take you there. Laval's 18th year in existence, their 9th Vanier Cup appearance, their on-home turf. Is it written in the stars? We'll find out. Welcome to Peps, ladies and gentlemen, a place where the Laval Rouge Or have not lost since September 19, 2004. You heard right, that's their last home loss. It was a 14 13 Slim Jim at the hands of the Montreal Caravan. 18,543 on hand for this one, and a lot of those people did not have a seat to call their own. It's the fifth time in the past seven years the Vanier has drawn over 18,000. The perfect red hot Calgary Dinos who lost to Laval 32-3 in the preseason. Clearly that was meaningless. Led by head coach Blake Nill, winner of back-to-back -back Vanier's in 2001 and 2002 with St. Mary's taking on Glenn Constantin and the Laval Rouge Or. Constantin has led his boys to six Vanier Cup titles since 2003. Could they add some more hardware to that trophy case on home turf? The F-18s were ready and so were the Rouge A Or. On their very first drive, it's Maxime Boutin, last year's Vanier MVP, going for 19 yards. However, on second and eight, Skinner misses his man. He pets his rabbit's foot, though. This one falls incomplete. Very lucky that was not an early pick. So in comes Boris Bidet. Field goal try. That one is caught by the wind, the heavy Quebec City wind. It's a single for the red and gold. So could the Dinos answer first run of the game, the big white truck, well, he gets shut down. A loss of five for Mercer Timmis. That would be foreshadowing. They would turn it over. Pascal Lochard, we thought he was injured. Yeah, not so much. He finds 15 yards here. Then it's Maxime Boutin once again. He cuts it over to the left. He cuts it back to the right. He is gone. Maxime Boutin all the way to the house and they're loving it in the land of the blue and white flag. However, a penalty flag hits the ground. This one comes all the way back. They would have to punt away the pigskin. Andrew Buckley then decides to put the dinos on his back. Here he runs, he dives, a nice 25 yard pickup. They'd have to punt away. Next possession for Calgary though, he finds 16 up the left side. Calgary would need all hands on deck. They would not find it in the first 15 minutes. One nothing Laval after one cue. All right, Ryan, I'll take the ball from here. Let's shift to the second cue now. Boris Bidet eyes up a 37-yard field goal. Bing! Brings it off the upright, his second miss of the day. You know he only missed two field goals all season long. A couple of minutes later, the red machine starts to roll. Lachard goes for a run. That's an 18-yard pickup, and it sets up Bidet for another attempt at splitting the uprights. This time he nails it, but hold up. Wait a minute, Calgary gets called for roughing the kicker. First down Laval, however, it leads to this 19-yarder from Bidet. He makes good of it. Rouge Aor's lead grows to four. Under three to go before the half, Laval does something very un-Laval-like. They try a little trickery on the end around flea flicker. Nathan Mitchell from Calgary comes down with it. So what did the Dinos do with the turnover? You can dance if you want to, you can leave those points behind. Safety for Laval, they take a 6-0 lead into the Blanche de Chamblay break. 
All right, second half time, and the first possession belonged to Pascal Lochar. Here he takes it for 11 yards. Next up, he takes it for eight. He takes a licking from Dr. Kosama. We've been over that first name. It's amazing, Dr. Lachard keeps it for four yards here on the ground. This one is for five, and this one is for 15. They actually went to PL six straight times to start the quarter. He's feeling just fine. It will result in a Boris Bidet splitting of the pipes. It's a two-score game for Laval. Calgary in desperate need of a wake-up call, and on second and 19, it's Rashawn Simonize with a shoe shine dandy of a grab over the shoulder. VCK, the Vancouver College kid, with a massive grab, and the dinos start to roll. Buckley off play action, then decides to go for a scamper. He dives it ahead. That puts the dinos knocking on the door. However, Rashawn Simonize, take a look, he twists his ankle in the turf. He would leave the game. Not good news for the Dinos. Very next play though, Jake Hardy on the end around. He finds the corner and is in. Cowtown, they are on the board. At, uh, all right, next Laval possession and good night. Dr. Kasama operates hard on Alex Skinner. Scalpel please. Calgary with momentum. They go two and out though, and then this happened. A blocked Hunt, Johnny Mark, he, well, he tries to make something out of it, something out of nothing. No, no dice. Laval, again, though, could not punch it into the end zone. V2 comes on, he punches it through the pipes. Laval goes up 12-7. Andrew Buckley then looks and finds Jake Hardy. He sheds a few tackles. He picks up a nice, solid chunk of change. Then it's Mercer Timmis on a screen, and he wasn't really doing the job with the handoffs, but the screen pass, oh yeah. This one's 40 plus and kaboom! He lowers his shoulder and says top of the muffin to you! You gotta watch Seinfeld to get that reference. Calgary with momentum. The Laval secondary stands strong. Two gorgeous diving deflections from the red and gold D, so enter Johnny Mark. He would line up and he would split the pipes for three. Hang on though, we've got a flag on the field. It's too many men for Laval. Calgary gets another shot and with it they do not disappoint. Andrew Buckley finds Chris Dobgo, a gorgeous diving grab. Number one in your programs, number one in your hearts. 14-12, Calgary the score. The valve right back though, it's Maxime Boutin with a huge run to the outside. He finds that corner again, the Laval O-line getting the job done on this night. Skinner then finds Guillaume Pourassa for a nice pickup. It results in who else? Boris Bidet coming on from 36 yards out. No problem whatsoever. 15-14 Laval heading into the final queue of the final game. All right, let's move to the final queue. Laval keep the ground game rolling. Guillaume Ryu goes for a big run, hurdles his defender and heads west. That's a 31 yard gain. Very next play, Maxime Boutin with the gut shot run. Laval keeps the sticks moving. A few plays later, Boutin racks up some more yardage, bringing the Rouge Aor into the Dinos red zone, where Lachard caps off the drive. Laval extends its lead to eight with just over five minutes to go. Under two minutes remaining now, and disaster strikes for Calgary. Bidet lines up for the field goal. He misses wide right, but there's laundry on the field. Shades of the 2009 Grey Cup here, folks. The Dinos get called for too many men on the field. Blake Nil looks like he's about to turn into Hulk Nil. So Bidet gets another crack at it. This time he makes it. That made it a two score game with just under a minute to play. So you know what time it is. Gatorade shower time. Glenn Constantin not looking very impressed. Nor would I. It's bloody cold in Quebec City. So as the final seconds tick away, the Vanier itself comes out to play. All that's left is to hand out the hardware. Vincent Delonge won the Bruce Coulter as the most outstanding defensive player, while Lachard takes the Ted Morris as the game's MVP. Just one last piece to hand out, and it's the big one. Laval wins its CIS record eighth Vanier Cup, back-to-back -back titles for the Red Machine. The win was Laval's 65th straight at home. Their last loss at Peps dating back to 2004. The 449 rushing yards Laval racked up eclipsed their own Vanier Cup record of 373 amassed in last year's Vanier Cup win 
over McMaster. Lashard racked up 184 of those yards on 25 carries, scoring the one touche. Boutin also led the ground game for Laval, racking up 190 yards on 20 carries. CIS rushing leader Mercer Timmis was a non-factor in this one, tallying just 33 yards on 12 carries. So another stellar CIS football season comes to a close with yet another title for the nation's most powerful program. The Laval Rouge et Or are celebrating and the Calgary Dinos are waiting for next year after a spectacular 49th Vanier Cup here in Quebec City. The Laval Rouge et Or won 25-14 over the Calgary Dinos to secure their eighth national title in their history, improving their own CIS record. While the Rouge et Or was ahead 6-0 at the half, the Dinos came storming back in the third quarter, scoring two touchdowns. Their second major gave them a 14-12 lead. However, the ground attack that piled up 449 yards, a CIS record, allowed Laval to regain the advantage and they never looked back. After his seventh Vanier Cup win as head coach, another national record, Glenn Constantin was a proud boss. The Dinos failed in their attempt to win their first Vanier Cup since 1995. After the game, head coach Blake Nell praised the Rouge Or offensive line. One of the headliners of the Rouge et Or ground attack, Pascal Lochard, captured the Ted Morris Memorial Trophy awarded to the MVP of the Vanier Cup. Lochard racked up an amazing 184 yards rushing with a touchdown. Nissan Deloge won the Bruce Coulter Award given to the outstanding defensive player of the game. Deloge had two sacks completing the 2013 playoffs with eight after leading the RSEQ during the regular season with eight and a half. The CIS football final was played in front of an enthusiastic throng of 18,543 fans. Well, Ryan, another fantastic edition of the Vanier Cup. Who would have known that the Laval Rouge et Or were going to win again? Uh, a lot of people knew, actually. It was Few, basically yeah. a given, almost. So yeah. I do want to thank you, though, for having another season with me. It's two years in a row now that you and I have been together. And you know, Ryan, uh, it's gonna be sad to see you leave next year. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. So thanks everyone for watching Crown Countdown You here in 2013. Nope. I'll see you next year. Where, where am I going? Whether it's your first home, a refinance, or an investment property, Kia Grant & Associates can find a mortgage solution for you. In association with Barico Paragon, the work she does for you is free. Find her on Facebook at Kia Grant Mortgages. With the anticipation before the kickoff of the Vanier Cup between Calgary and hometown Laval, the CIS handed out the hardware Thursday night at the Sun Life Financial Awards Banquet presented by Millette in Quebec City. Two days before kickoff of the national championship, the first and second team All-Canadians were revealed along with the seven major award winners, including 
Rookie of the Year, Defensive Player, Lineman of the Year, Coach of the Year, and of course, the Heck Crichton Award for the Most Outstanding Player in Canada. Let's hear from this year's award winners. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. It's time again for the round table now in true Quebec City fashion. I'm going to put on my best French accent. I apologize heavenly, heavenly and heavily in advance. We have James Moulin on the far side of the table. Ville Vert right here to my right. And live from Montreal from Republic and the Sherbrooke Verreon, we've got JP Schwari. My voice cracked. And I'm Ryan Sullivan. Let's start things out with game time. Your impressions of the Van Gaet Cup. Jim Mullen, well, I couldn't pull it off. Well, there you go. I, I was at the Vanier Cup. As a matter of fact, just got off the plane a few hours ago. Uh, it was quite the trip back. Uh, fantastic coverage of the uh, Vanier Cup. Uh, 17 pages here in the, uh, in the local newspaper. I was not only impressed with the media coverage, but I was impressed with the way the Rouge or organization organized this event. Uh, you know, for those of you who haven't been there, you haven't really experienced the best in Canadian university football, not only when it comes to what's on the field, but what the event is outside. It uh, really uh, knocked me onto my heels. Uh, you, you know, when you take a look at uh, what they did at Laval oh, since they started this program uh, back in the mid-90s, it's really simple. It's humble beginnings because when they started this out, they were only drawing about 12 to 1,300 a game. Uh, 13,000 average fans didn't show up uh, overnight. Uh, and the other thing is, is that there were leaders in the community who really piloted this and built it up literally brick by brick by uh, reaching out to the community, bringing more money in to build things up, and reaching to other levels of government. So uh, in terms of the overall show that was there, it was fantastic. In terms of uh, the game, I have a little piece of information here, and JP can back me up on this, actually. I'm talking with Bob Stauffer, uh, the former SID at the University of Alberta. On my phone, you can take a look at this. I predicted an 11-point spread. Thank you very much. I should just drop the mic yeah. and, and leave the building <laughs> yeah. right now. We put it up there on the screen for you. He's very good at MS Paint, as you can see. <laughs> Billy, your thoughts? I thought it was a great game. Uh, Calgary showed up. They played pretty well. They were just weren't able to pull it out in the end. Uh, I think Laval was too strong. They're too good. They're, uh, they're what everyone should try to aspire to be in CIS football. It's a great program. They put on a great show, as Jim said. Uh, unfortunately for Calgary, they just weren't good enough this year. I think they're going to come back next year even stronger. Uh, but Laval, they're just going to keep putting a good product on the field. And uh, I think they're going to be even tougher to beat next year. Following the worst intro to you in history, JP, <laughs> your thoughts, buddy? Well, you know what? I could say <clears throat> flowers to Laval, but you know, it's already been said. Obviously, they've got this great organization backing the program, and really, they're setting the bar really high year after year for all the other programs in Canada. But I want to send out the flowers to the Calgary offense, and you know they probably didn't come up with their best performance with just over 300 uh, total yards on offense. But the way Andrew Buckley played at quarterback and the, the decisiveness which Swift he plays in the in the pocket and throws the football, and then his receivers, you know, Jake Hardy. Uh, Simon Ice, Dobko, these guys are dominant players and still so young. And then you had a Mercer Timmons at, at running back. I mean, for me, it, it was just 
uh, a fantastic experience to watch these guys play live as we do not get the opportunity to watch them play uh, so often. So really, Calgary and, and the demeanor of, of Blake Nail on the sideline leading his team, uh, really, I was impressed by this program. And it's unfortunate that they come to Quebec and have to play in, in such an hostile environment. But really, uh, play it anywhere else, I think it would have been a really close game right until the end. Uh, JP, um, we don't get to see the Laval Rouge or week after week, but the one thing that absolutely knocked me out, and I even threw it out there on Twitter, is I wish the offensive line as a unit for the uh, Rouge or could have got the Ted Morris trophy because they absolutely dominated this game for the Rouge or, and the defensive player of the game was the defensive line for the Rouge or. Uh, to, to, to be able to be that dominant, I know that Calgary was a quick team and a fast team, but at, at the end of the day, that was the element that they couldn't handle. Yeah, all very well said. Let's go now to objectionable conduct, and I have to throw out a gigantic I'm sorry to the Laval Rouge or because I picked Western number one all year long in the CIS top 10. Take it for what it is, the CIS top 10, but Western was number one for the majority of the season, and wow, that should not have been the case. Yes, and I picked the Laval Rouge or number one with every one of my ballots because I can see what was coming. That's why that's why that's why you threw it over to me. So, uh, (laughs) but you know what? The majority of those voters who uh, uh, voted for the Western Mustangs, a large chunk of them came from Quebec because they didn't like what they were seeing on the offense with the Rouge or in terms of their inability to finish drives. And I think we saw a bit of that uh, in the Vanier Cup especially in the first half. JP out in Montreal, what stood out to you? And uh, what, what kind of grinded your gears a little bit, perhaps? Well, you know what? And, and I could go on with the game, but there's not much to say, perhaps, that the, there was an unfair advantage to that O-line on the Laval front, you know, having those big guys up front. But really, my objectionable conduct would go to the, uh, the entire CIS versus CFL uh, debate. Like, you know, we... Those past two years, there was such a great hype about the Vanier Cup being paired with the Grey Cup. This year, not so much. You know, Sportsnet doing a great job trying to give some visibility to, to the league. You know, same with Radio Can, but it's just not the same. Like, why can't everybody just get along and give the proper visibility to these kids and these programs? You know, when the time is right, you know, it's, it, it, it should be a spectacle. It should be, it should be a major, a major uh, uh, show on TV, and it just didn't happen the way it should be. So, you know, everybody should work together and bring the CIS to a different level and would just help everyone in Canada in terms of the fans, you know, the coaches, the programs, everyone would benefit. So I get on the same page, everyone. Absolutely well said. Billy Ver. Uh, I had a problem with the two teams doing their best Saskatchewan Rough Riders impressions from a couple years ago. 13 men on the field during a field goal, that can't happen. That's day one in special teams during training camp. One guy goes into return, free safety comes off. I don't know what was going on with those two teams. In the end, it really hurt Calgary. Uh, Missed the field goal, ran it out, and they had too many men on the field. Down eight. With a chance to maybe drive the field, it probably wouldn't have happened, but they would have at least had a chance to do it. Uh, But unfortunately, fundamentals, and uh, somebody's got to take the blame for that. There you go, JP. Uh, looking ahead to 2014. Hey, don't oh. I get an objectionable conduct? Uh, you're, you're nothing but objectionable conduct. All right, Jim, take us home on oh, that one. Okay, my objectionable conduct actually starts with a uh, with a pretty nice story. It's the feedback that we've got about this show. Uh, we got it from all Canadians. We got it from uh, coaches. We got it from several administrator uh, administrators. We got it from people in the CIS office. And uh, the thing that they like is that. We bring our opinions. We create a discussion uh, around CIS football, and I think it's very much appreciated. So my objectionable conduct goes out to those very few individuals out there who can't deal with those opinions within the CIS. And there's not very many of them out there, but you know who you are. And you know what? Don't take it personally. All we want to do is we want to contribute to the game so we have a national discussion about this thing. And with the feedback that we got in Quebec City, I think we've uh, started a national discussion, so they should lighten up. I know exactly what you mean, and I would be honored if someone would call me Dr. Golan every now and then. <laughs> Let's wrap things up. Let's look ahead to 2014. JP, take us there. Well, you know, as we all know, you know, the, the recruiting is where it happens during the offseason. And really, it just started off to a, a meteor start for the Rougeur. You know, they landed... 
well, I don't know for the rest of Canada, but they landed the, by far the best quarterback in Quebec. You go Richard, the quarterback at Vanier, used to play for a team world. You know, this kid has it all, can run, throw the ball, the football. And, you know, he's heading to the Rouge R. So, you know, they're locked for the next five years. They landed at, at least three uh, premier O-lines so far. Maybe not blue chips, but guys that will, you know, climb that ladder and become... Uh, starters somewhere in, in, throughout their career. So right now, you know, recruiting is looking uh, to, to go a lot in the Rougeur's way. Billy, you just signed a seven-year extension with Crown Countdown U. <laughs> what are you looking forward to most? I'm looking forward to a couple things. Uh, what's going to play out at UBC uh, with the football program and other sports? Obviously, that's a big thing for me. Uh, finding out what's going to happen with Eric Dulesky. Uh Andrew Buckley is going to be the quarterback for the University of Calgary Dinos next year. Uh, Dulesky can go somewhere because he sat out all year this year being injured. I could see him going to the OUA to a team that needs a quarterback and uh, being pretty successful. Uh, and then in Canada West, I'm looking forward to see uh, how the recruiting battle goes, uh, if the team's going to be able to challenge Calgary next year because that's a young team and they, uh, they're pretty good this year and I think they're going to be even better next year. Well, for all of us here at Crown, I'm just kidding. Jim, take us home, buddy. I will take you home. <laughs> uh, uh, what I'm looking forward to in 2014 is not only another year of Crown Countdown U, uh, but also what happens with uh, a couple of cornerstone franchises, if you want to put it that way, the Saskatchewan Huskies and the Western Mustangs. First of all, for the Western Mustangs, Chris Bertoya, the assistant coach and the guy that is uh, in charge of uh, recruiting with Western, you know what he was doing on his off days in Quebec City? He was going to the French Canadian kids and saying, come out to Western. He, he has promised a year like no other in terms of recruiting and going to every corner of the country. And he wants to bring Greg Marshall with him. He wants to bring the closer out on the road with him. So, you know, Western's pretty close and I'd like to see what happens if uh, they turn it uh, into the road show. As for the Saskatchewan Huskies, uh, they were a team that were loaded with talent this year that should have done more with it. Now what we've seen out of the Calgary Dinos, uh, those two close games that they had with Calgary, they were that far away. Do they make the necessary changes that they have to in the offseason to put themselves over the top? They also lose a number of players on the defensive side as well. So uh, I think those are two very uh, curious stories that uh, we'll try to follow uh, throughout the offseason. There you go. That will do it for another year here at Crown Count Danu. Jim Mullen, thanks for driving the boat. A fine conductor as always. Billy Green, great job this season. Thanks so much. JP Schwarre out of Montreal. Thank you, my friend. Hey, thanks, guys, for having me on. And really, to all the crew out there, you're doing a, fa a fantastic job. You know, we're hearing it all the way here in Quebec. People are talking about your show, and I just can't wait to see what you guys are going to come up to uh, in 2014. Thanks so much, JP. We'll definitely see you next year. And a huge thank you to David Dubé out in Saskatchewan with Crown Produce. Again, fantastic job. Thank you so much for supporting the show. You're a honey badger, brother. I'm Ryan <laughs> Sullivan. We'll catch you next season. supplying select Canadian retailers. Crown Produce, proud sponsors of Canada West Football and Canadian University Countdown on Shaw.